Today, this very day, that began a little over 10 hours ago, this day is a day the Lord has made. And we have lots of choices, don't we? But we have chosen to gather here to praise and thank the God of all creation. I welcome you. I pray it's going to be a good time, an uplifting time, a time when you and I will know that God's already here. They will sense that as we worship. We'll sense that as we sing and as we pray. And when we leave, we will know that God's been with us here and that God goes forth with us as we go in the world to be disciples for Jesus Christ. I welcome you. Please stand now and sing with me our song of gathering, He Has Made Me Glad. He has made me glad. You'll find the words printed in the bulletin. In our bulletin, you'll find our call to worship. We come to praise you, O God. You are beyond all names, and yet you are known by many names. I greet you in the name of Christ. Let us now greet one another.
Good morning, Asbury. That was pretty weak again, Leah. Yeah, it was. Good morning, Asbury. That's what I like. Please join with me in the opening thoughts found in the bulletin. Let us pray. You have brought us, O oh God, to another Lord's Day when we are privileged to worship you with our brothers and sisters in Christ. May we have unity of mind and heart as we open ourselves to the movement of your Holy Spirit. As your love grows within us, may we have rich fellowship with you and with one another. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Let us now affirm our beliefs. I believe in God who places joy in our souls, dancing in our toes, and songs in our hearts. I believe God wanted gladness to flow like a river and so created a bountiful earth with plenty for all to share. I believe in Jesus, who turned water into wine, parted with outcasts and sinners, and touched the broken so they could leap and dance. I believe Jesus opened the doors and set an extra place so we could feast. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who prompts us to smile, who sends us invitations to come and dine, who nudges us to openness and tenderness. I believe the Spirit is present every time we gather to break bread, and is always urging us to live joyfully and walk hopefully. This we believe. Let us pray. Loving God, it seems so calm as we gather to worship here. As we gather, we feel safe and secure. And yet we know that so many places in our world today is filled with unrest and tension, conflict and war. And yet we know that between the tension, conflict and war and so many others, there are those peacemakers and peacekeepers, those who stand in harm's way, those who attempt to bring reconciliation those to attempt to build your kingdom of understanding, love, and justice. So this morning we lift up the peacemakers and peacekeepers, praying for their safety, praying for their strength. Lord, walk with them, journey with them, comfort and bless them. For we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Take a look around on your seat. You will find our sign and pads. We do hope you'll sign them and pass them along. If this is your first Sunday to worship at Asbury, please stop back at the Welcome Center after worship as we have a, a registration form and a gift we'd like to give you. Also, if you have a joy or a concern you'd like lifted up during the pastoral prayer, you'll find some pink sheets there in your seats. Just fill them out. And during the children's time, which will be coming up, you'll be able to lift them up and usher will make sure I have that for the prayer. At this time, will Tyler please come forward and bring along a, a big sister and a big brother and mom and dad. to think about the service of holy baptism. I think it's a, it's a lot of different things. And one thing you've heard me say a number of times is it's really about connection. It's about me reminding all of us that we're all connected in Christ. And one way we do this 
is by adding some water to our baptismal font. Can you read what that says, Sophie? Yeah, Jordan River. It was 2,000 years ago, Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. So by me adding water to the water already in our baptismal font, it connects us. It links us with Jesus. But in addition to that, I'll be asking Mark and Becky a couple of questions. And those questions have been questions asked, I think, of my parents, golly, 60 years ago. The same kind of questions we ask parents for all baptized. It's a way of reminding us of our connection. Our service you'll find on page 39 in our hymnal this morning. My brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are brought into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. At this time, I present Tyler James for holy baptism. Yeah. The service begins with me asking you several questions to profess your faith. We then ask the church to support you because I'm convinced more now than ever raising a child in the Christian faith it's tough stuff. It takes a community, it takes a church to do it. So on behalf of the church I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Will you nurture Tyler James in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself to profess his faith openly and to lead a Christian life thank you okay church do you as Asbury Church being called the body of Christ reaffirm both your rejection of sin and commitment to Christ we will nurture one another in the faith and life and include Tyler James before you in your care God's help proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Tyler with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Hi, Tyler. Hi. How are you, buddy? Yes. Hi. You say hi? Tyler James? I baptize you. In the name of God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. Tyler, may God be at work within you. That being born through the water and the Spirit, you may become a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Congratulations. Congratulations. Ah, yes. We have a special treat. Your mommy and daddy tell me that your big sister has a song that you just love. And she's going to sing it for us. And we're going to have some of the campers gather around. The words are printed in the bulletin. So if there's campers that know the song, could you all come down front? Because to tell you the truth, I know Randy Travis. Well, I know the songs he sings. But I don't know this song. So you have to teach me, okay, Sophie? Who's going to join you in singing it? Come on down, we got to help Sophie sing a song here. Because I think you'd like this song. Something about rock and sword. Like that song? 
Ready? Who's going to help sing it? You ready? better do it again, okay? Maybe some of the big people know it now. It's printed in the bulletin. Can we sing? Ready? Go. <laughs> you like that? I am. I have told you like that song. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. As we turn the page in the bulletin, in the hymnal rather, you'll find it uh, the top of page 43. It is our joy now to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend Tyler James to your love and to your care. I ask of you, well, to be honest, I require of you to do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you. And we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for helping. I want to thank you. Clayton for being a big brother and being a big sister. Dad, congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. Becky, congratulations. Let's welcome the newest member of God's family. At this time, I believe the choir is going to join our Asbury Ringers for a special music celebration.
How about some children coming on down for a story? Take your time, okay? Make it okay? Good morning. How are we doing today? Me too. A couple minutes ago, during the service of baptism, I was talking about connections and how we're all connected. Then I got thinking about the number of, of my friends, ministers, who are, who are doing church right now. And then I know a number of them at about this time actually are telling a children's story. And I got thinking, I wonder how many people, children, your ages, are in church right now hearing a children's story. There's got to be millions of them. Millions. That's a lot. I think it's just one of the many ways we're all connected. And I know that, that uh, many of you I baptized, just like I did with Tyler. I know that many others have been baptized in other churches. Some here in Watertown, some in places around the world. But because we're baptized, guess what? We're all connected. It's a way of saying that I am your brother. And you're my sister. Because we're baptized. We're baptized. We're related. We're, we're connected. You do. In fact, you have two brothers, don't you? Yeah, you do. But we're related too. You're my brother in Jesus. My brother in Christ. So we're all connected. Think about all the different things we do in the world and how we all work together, don't we? We sometimes do things differently. But we're still all related and we're still all connected. And it's amazing how much we can do when we all work together. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you that we're all connected, that we all work together, that we're all brothers and sisters in Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the church. Bless us. Bless each of these children. For we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on over for a treat. One, please. One. Good morning, AJ. Good morning. Take one, please. Go. Okay, grab one. Careful. Don't up the bag. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm too high, wasn't it? There we go. Good morning. There we go. Good morning, Sophie. Good morning, Lucy. Here we go. Thank you. I don't know about you guys, but after Halloween, I expect candy for all of us, Lynn. Maybe. Do we all have to come down front? You do? I'll be down there. Okay. This, this morning's scripture reading is found on page 878 in the Bible. Find in the seats. Scripture reading comes from the New Testament Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter, verses 35 through 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to set one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or be baptized with the baptism that I, have, I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, 
The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as the rulers, Lord, over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of the Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is number 530. Please find it. Are ye able? Please join me.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Lord, we've had an awesome worship service so far. So my words, my prayer, is that you might use me to bring your message. That we might hear you speaking through these words that I share. For I ask of your inspiration, blessing, and strength. In the name of Jesus, amen. At times I wonder how I ever wrote a sermon before 1986, really. That was when Margie's brother gave me my first computer. And it's amazing how you, you just type in and all of a sudden these illustrations come flowing out of the internet someplace. I don't know where. I have a number of different databases that I go to. And for, for this morning's sermon, I, I put in ambition and wanting the best for our children. And a story came up. And I first began reading it and it was, uh, it didn't, didn't register with me. It happened 25 years ago. But as I was reading through the story, I said, I remember. Her name was Wanda Webb Holiday. Yeah, that was my reaction. Wanda Webb Holiday wanted the best for her daughter, Shanna. Shanna was a cheerleader and trying out for a high school cheerleading team in Texas. Except Shanna's main competition was a woman, a girl by the name of Amber Heath. Amber was a little bit better than Shanna. So Wanda wanted to give her daughter a little edge. The first year what she did was she brought up technicalities as why Amber was not able to be a cheerleader. It didn't work and, and Amber won. The second year Wanda decided to have a proactive ad campaign. So she made pens and pencils and rulers with her daughter's name on saying, Shanna, for cheerleader. Brought them to school, passed them out. Well, one of the ethics policies was the school was you couldn't do that. So again, Shanna was not allowed to be a cheerleader the second year. If that's all that happened, we wouldn't know anything about Wanda Webb Holiday. But the third year, she kicked it up a notch, or several notches, I guess we would say. She talked to her brother-in-law, who knew some hitmen, I guess is the best way of saying it. Some individuals who, for a price, would take care of the competition. Wanda hired a hitman to kill Amber's mother. The thinking was if Amber's mother was killed, Amber would be so distraught she could never possibly compete in the competition. Therefore her daughter would become a cheerleader. <laughs> Wanda's brother-in-law, instead of going to the hitman, went to the police. Wanda was arrested. And in fact, she was also charged with two counts because she wanted the hitman to kill both Amber as well as Amber's mother, but she didn't have the money to pay for both, so she opted just to have Amber's mother killed. The headline read, Texas Cheerleader Murdering Mom. 1991. Remember that? Ah, I figured you would. I think there's a little bit of Wanda Webb Holiday in all of us. I really do. We want the best for our children. We want the best for those that we love. We want to give them maybe a little edge. Okay, maybe Wanda went overboard a whole lot. But we want to give our children an edge for them to compete. 
We want to do what we can to provide our family, our loved ones, with the resources to compete in today's world. There's a little bit of Wanda in all of us. Thankfully, we don't go quite as far as she went. But the reality is, we all have a little bit of Wanda in us. I think we have a whole lot more of James and John in us. James and John, two disciples, as Paul shared the story this morning. They went to Jesus. And much like, I'm thinking of some of our children, or pro probably our grandchildren more likely, come to us and say, Grandpa, I have a favor to ask of you. I want you to say yes. Will you say yes? <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it happened, I know. James and John, the same thing. They go to Jesus and say, Jesus, we're going to ask you something. We want you to say yes. You'll say yes, won't you? Now, to be fair, to be fair, understand, James and John were special. Jesus called them the sons of thunder. And I think that one reason they got that nickname was the Gospel of Luke chapter 9 tells a very interesting story about how Jesus was on the road to Jerusalem. And they were traveling through villages in Samaria. So there were Samaritans. And Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead to prepare the village in Samaria for his arrival. The disciples get there and the village would not receive Jesus. They said, thank you, but no thank you. We don't want him coming here. So the disciples go back to Jesus and go back to the other disciples and say, you may not believe this, but you're not welcomed in this village. And Luke 9 tells a story. It was, it was James and John who said, Jesus, we're going to call down fire from hell, from heaven. We're going to destroy that village. What do you think about that? We're going to, right now, just like that, we're going to call down fire from heaven. We're going to destroy him. Is that okay with you? And Jesus says, no. We're not going to call down fire from heaven and destroy them. But you get a sense of, of their commitment to Jesus. Two other times. One was when Jesus went into the home of Jairus. Jairus' daughter was ill. Jairus' daughter died. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and went into the bedroom with Jairus' daughter. Just those three disciples when Jesus raised her from the dead. You get the idea James and John were special? Okay, one more story. It's called the Transfiguration. Basically, Jesus takes with him Peter, James, and John. They go up a mountain. Jesus lights up like a light bulb, has a conversation with Moses and Elijah. They then come back down the mountain and Jesus says, Shh, don't tell anyone about this experience. I understand that. Who's going to believe him, right? But Jesus chose Peter, James, and John to go with him for this awesome, once-in-a-lifetime, breathtaking experience. So we know, we know that James and John were special. James and John were close to Jesus. One final story. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, who does Jesus look to to take care of his mother? John. Have I proved my point? James and John were special. They were close to Jesus. They go to Jesus and say, okay, just, we're going to ask you a favor. Just say yes. And they say, well, what would you like? Well, when you come into your glory, when you become the president, we want to become the person sitting to your left and to your right. We want to be the vice president, the secretary of state, the leader of... Con 
Congress, we want to be your number two and three guys. We want to we want to be there in authority with you. We want you to recognize our greatness. Because after all, we are great. As you heard the story from Mark's gospel, the other disciples were indignant. <coughs> Who do you think you are? You think Jesus should do this for you? We've all worked hard. What makes you think you're so special? You're not special. We deserve it too, you know. I, I can imagine them bickering back and forth. But notice, Jesus does not criticize James and John. He does not say, you're bad for thinking this way. Does not do that. Jesus simply says, let me tell you about greatness. Our society, our culture, have people in authority over us. They boss us around. They give us orders. We look up to them. And that's the way culture, that's the way society works. But in this game called the kingdom, the person who is the greatest is the servant. Kind of a, a flip-flopping, isn't it? The greatest person is the one who serves the most. So, let me throw an idea out. If I were to walk into Samaritan Medical Center and ask to see the most important person in that facility, probably most people would point me to the office of Mr. Thomas Carmen. And I will say that Mr. Carmen and Mrs. Carmen have done a great deal for Samaritan, a great deal for the community, a great deal for the county. We are blessed to have them. But, but take note. If I am brought to Samaritan Medical Center with chest pains, I would rather not see Tom Carmen walk through the door. <laughs> if I need blood drawn at Samaritan Medical Center, I don't think Tom's the one to do it. And if my stomach is a little bit upset and things happen to, you know, <laughs> probably I would not want Mr. Carmen to be the one walking in the door. See, 2,000 years ago, Jesus knew that. Jesus knew that, yeah, there's, there's greatness in terms of, of authority, and we need that in our culture. It'd be chaos and confusion and anarchy if we did not have it. But, when we think about greatness, it's the people that serve are the great ones. Max Licato, many of us have attended courses offered by our own Max Bovee about Max Licato that he has taught. We've read Max Locato's books. Uh, we've heard his videos, an awesome, lec awesome lecturer and speaker and preacher. Max Locato talks about his church. And he says in his church he has a group called the Second Mile Club. And these are people who go above and beyond the normal stuff in the life of the church. They're not recognized really any place. But they're the Second Mile Givers. These are people, for example, there's a, there's a guy in his church, much like us, who on Friday, I know that when our cleaner, when Francis leaves the church, it's spotless. I know it. But between Friday at 10 when she leaves and Sunday morning at 8 o'clock when we get here, things happen. So this, this one gentleman in Max Locato's church 
comes in at 7 o'clock in the morning. He goes through the church picking up papers, checks the bathrooms to make sure the paper towels, toilet paper, soap, make sure it's all there. There's no recognition any place. His name's not written down, but Max Locato knows that when he comes into church at 9 o'clock, his second mile man has been around because the church is perfect and spotless. Max Locato talks about other people going the, the second mile. The servants in his church. We have lots of those people in our church. We are blessed. I am blessed to be the pastor of this church and all of you who are in service. As you know, we, we, um, a couple weeks ago, our, one of our child care workers resigned and we have one of our regular attendees assisting in the nursery. Uh, no recognition. I don't even think she has a speaker on to hear me talk about this right now. It's a second mile. We're blessed to have her down there helping. As you know, as I mentioned, uh, Bonnie has uh, retired as of Friday. We have a person coming in this week to fill in, to cover. We're blessed to have Sue doing that. But, but in terms of our education, in terms of our Sunday school, in terms of our choirs, plural, the number of people who serve and aren't always recognized, we're blessed. We're truly blessed. Now, I say all this not to discount competition. Because I think it's the competitive spirit that led Bill Gates and Stephen Jobs to produce two of the awesome companies we have in America. It's that competitive spirit. Nothing wrong with that. James and John, I think, went a little overboard, much like Wanda Hobbs Holloway went a little overboard. When it comes to that competitive spirit, I guess if you watched the Michigan game yesterday, I know probably some of you don't want to talk about that, do you? But it was rather competitive to the last, what, 10 seconds? Yeah. Something basically unheard of. Exciting? Yes. But that competitive nature helps people to be their very best. And to be honest, when I go into Samaritan having chest pains, I want the best. I appreciate that competitive spirit, that competitive nature. But when it comes to real greatness, Jesus knew that it's not a matter of, of competing. It's a matter of working together. It's a matter of connecting around a baptismal font. Because we're brothers and sisters. Tyler is my brother in Christ. It's that connection. And it's a connection through servanthood. James and John were good disciples. To the very end, they stood by Jesus. As Jesus hung on the cross, they were there. John was the one who took care of Mary, the mother of Jesus, after Jesus no longer could. They are to be commended, not because they sat on Jesus' left and on his right when he came into his glory, but they are to be remembered because of their service. Join me now as we sing our chorus of reflection. You'll find the words printed in the bulletin as we think about Jesus who he is and what he did. A whole bunch of different names we know him by. His name is wonderful. Join me please as we sing together the chorus.
I would draw your attention to the prayer concerns listed on pages 6 and 7 in our bulletin this morning. In addition to those, we lift up the family and friends of Rose Campbell. That's Lisa McIntosh's mother. Um, struggled for many, many months. We pray for Lisa and her family in Rose's passing. We also lift up Marie Jusen going in for eye surgery on Wednesday. We pray God's healing hand to be with you. Let us pray. Lord, as your people, we gather to worship. And we bring all that we are. We bring the stuff that excites us. We bring the concerns that weigh heavy upon our hearts. And as we gather to worship, we lay it all before you. Knowing that you are well aware of the joys and concerns before we even utter them. There's so many who are hurting. So many struggling with illness. So many facing life's decisions. Loving God, we pray your hand of guidance, your hand of comfort, your hand of peace to be with those we've lifted up this day. There's also much that blesses us. We lift up and give you praise and thanks for the joys that surround us. Gracious God, hear these prayers we offer this day. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray, and we join in sharing these words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Is there a mission, Barbara? Thank you. <clears throat> I want to tell you that there is some good news. We've certainly seen enough bad news, particularly coming out of the Middle East. But I want you to know that the Methodist Church, along with others, have done some very great things in Sub-Sahara Africa. One of the things that you all have been blessed to give, and probably a lot of you don't even know it, our conference has a money that they call Africa 360 for 2015. And we, Asbury Church, have given our thousand dollars towards that. Now, what does that mean? The one, there are two major things. One is all of you have heard of at some time or other, and that is the mosquito nets for malaria. I want to let you know how well that is working. In the beginning, only 3% of Africa, remember this is the Sub-Sahara, below the Sahara Desert, only 3% of the people had malaria nets. Now, 56% have the malaria m nets. Now, why do 
many of us in Asbury should leap for joy is because 80% of the children under five years old die from malaria. So we are helping to bring that infant mortality down. When you think of us having the baptism today, we don't think of children dying under the age of five. But that is their big worry there. Number two, I think all of us agree that there's nothing any more important than health and education. And in education, we Methodists can certainly celebrate. We have in Zimbabwe, Africa University, which was started in 1991. And I want to let you know, because of what we are doing there, how much it has benefited the people who live there. 90% of the students who graduate from Africa University go back to their home territory. Now just think of that. We think of people graduating from India and et cetera, medical school, of coming here to practice and staying here. But that's not true of those who go to Africa University. Not only do they go back to their homes, sometimes in these very isolated communities, and we can think of what we've seen of Nepal, they have the very first school in the village. Or they may have the very first health clinic. Now that says a lot. So I want you to realize that everything is not terribly grim everywhere. And you, through your contributions, are adding mightily to this battle. Thank you. Thank you. God's blessed us and given to us. Let us now give to God. The ushers will receive our morning offering.
Loving God, we bring these gifts to you this day because we want to make a difference in our world. We want to reach out in the name of Jesus to feed the hungry. Whether it's a physical hunger, a spiritual hunger. Loving God, nourish and strengthen us as we nourish and strengthen our world. Accept these gifts, multiply them as we dedicate them to your glory. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. amen. The closing hymn is Lord of the Dance, number 261, Lord of the Dance. Please be seated. Jesus has a way of, of turning upside down what we think about. For example, Jesus came as the king and yet died on a cross. And it doesn't fit our logic about what being a king is all about. And here we have Jesus talking about greatness. And we think of and greatness sitting down in Washington, D.C. someplace. And yet Jesus knew that real greatness is all about being in service. In all likelihood, no, beyond that, I am convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt I will never hold an office in the state of Washington, D.C. or Washington, D.C. State of Washington, D.C. <laughs> and that's one reason why I wouldn't, but... Politics is not for me. For me, that's not greatness. But I can serve. And you know what? So can you.
Thank you. Probably the best way we can let our little light shine is through service. Let's go do it. God's brought us here. God now sends us forth. Thanks be to God. Amen. This has been a broadcast of the 1015 service, Sunday morning, from Asbury United Methodist Church, located on Franklin Street in Watertown, Asbury United Methodist Church.